Hi everyone, welcome to Yoga with Haini. I'm Haini and this week I'm going to lead you through a chilled evening slow flow yoga practice. So we're going to be moving but in a rather slow manner and I'll invite you to marinate in some of the poses for a bit longer time. So it's a nice chilled practice for the end of your day. Let's get started. For this week's practice, you don't necessarily need any props, but I have a yoga block and I have a pillow, a cushion here. So I'll show you how you might use them if you like to support your pigeon pose or if you need any cushioning for the knees. So a cushion or maybe a blanket and a block would be optional props. But you might do this practice without any props as well. When you are ready with your props, with your practice space, we're going to start in child's pose. Make yourself comfortable for this first child's pose. So already here, if you know your knees are, are sensitive or if hips, ankles feel any kind of, if there's any discomfort in any of your joints, then you could take a pillow, a cushion, maybe put it under the knees or under the pelvis. So sometimes having a cushion or a block under the pelvis helps with the joints in the legs and in the feet. Because we're going to spend a bit of time, a few minutes in this child's pose. So that's why I invite you to find an easy, comfortable child's pose. The legs could be wider apart or they could be very close together. But once you have, have your legs in a nice place, then lean your upper body forward and feel free to adjust the arms as well. You could have your arms extended overhead. You might like to bend the arms, even bring hands under the head. And then take a moment to focus on the breath. Now, I suggest that if you still feel discomfort in your pose, you could rock a bit from side to side with your pelvis. You might rock your head, your neck from side to side. So don't feel that you need to find stillness in this child's pose. We're just settling in and we start to slowly wind down, calm down at the end of the day. So some gentle movement might actually help more than trying to force yourself to stay still. So feel free to move. At the same time, check in with your in-breaths, your out-breaths. Let your breaths flow all the way down towards the lower back, all the way down towards the belly. Take a few more breaths in this child's pose. Just notice how your body feels now. If there's tension in the shoulders and the neck, let that tension soften away. Let's take one more breath in and out. And then we'll just leave the breath flowing and we'll start to find our way into a twisted child's pose. So with your next breath, bring your chest slightly off the mat, lift your head off the mat and then slide your left arm under your right arm, under the right armpit. So it's a bit like thread the needle, but we still stay in child's pose. So now I'm leaning the outside of my left shoulder and my head onto the floor. The left arm is on the right side of the mat and you have options for the right arm. You could either press the right hand or the fingertips onto the mat. So you're actively opening your chest out to the right side to make the twist maybe a bit more intense. So you could use the right arm to press down to open the chest or the other option would be 
to kind of wrap your right arm behind the back, behind the pelvis, maybe reach for the left thigh. And you might enjoy that variation more, whichever allows you to find a twist. And especially now in the upper spine and focus on that opening through the chest. So looking for sensations in the upper spine, around the shoulders. Take another breath in and out, breathe towards the ribs. And then if you have your right arm behind the back, slowly bring the right hand down and inhale, elevate the chest up and step the left arm in front of you. We'll do same to other side. So now slide your right arm under the left arm and then lean the right shoulder, lean the head back down. And if you want, you could either press the left hand or the fingertips on the mat. So kind of a bit more actively twisting out to the left. Or you have the other option where you wrap the left arm behind the back, maybe reach the left hand to the right thigh. And you might enjoy that option more. See which one works better for you on this side. Breathe towards the ribs. So it is more that ribs area that we are twisting here. The lower back stays quite anchored with the pill. Let's take another breath or two in and out. And then slowly, slowly release the left hand down if you have the arm behind the back and bring yourself onto hands, onto both hands and knees. And we are going to slowly bring ourselves all the way up onto all fours. If you have a pillow or other props there, you could put them aside and bring yourself onto hands and knees and let yourself move a bit here. So maybe rocking a bit from side to side. If you want, you could extend one leg behind you, rock forward and back a few times. That was a long child's pose. If you do that, make sure you do it to both sides. Just let yourself move a bit. You could even do a couple of cat cows if you want. And then we are going to step our right leg forward, coming into a winged dragon pose. So stay on the left knee, but step your right foot forward. And you could step your right foot all the way to the outside of the mat. So stepping it further out to the side, lean onto both hands or here, you could also use a block under your hands if leaning all the way down onto the floor doesn't feel good. And then let your right hip open. So this is the winged dragon. You can bring the weight to the outer edge of your right foot. So we're not really leaning onto the foot as much as we are supporting through the hands and arms. Open the chest. You can even gently pull the chest forward. So it's an opening around the hips opening along the front side of that left thigh and hip. Maybe you feel it around the groin area, the inner thigh and that right leg. Just make sure there's no pain in your knees, no pain in the hip joints. And here as well, you might move a bit. So that subtle, subtle, small movement might actually release tension more than just trying to stay still. And keep breathing. Take another breath in and out in this winged dragon. And then we are going to stay on the same side, but we're going to move into half splits. So now as you inhale, start to send your pelvis back. And you could either keep hands on a block or on the floor. And now we are extending that front leg more. You could still keep the right foot 
kind of on the outer edge of the mat. So it doesn't need to be straight in front of you. It's more leaning to the inside of that right leg now. So opening through the hamstring, through the back of that right leg, maybe in the calf, you could point and flex your right ankle. And also along the back. So we are leaning forward. We're opening the whole back side of the body. And again, feel free to move. You could rock the pelvis from side to side. Or you could rock slightly forward and back. If there are movements that you need, let yourself move. And breathe another couple of times in and out. Let the neck soft and make sure you're not tensing the shoulders or the neck. And then we are going to continue with the same side. So now with your next couple of breaths, open the chest so come slightly up from that forward bend and then slide your right leg, that front leg, out to your side. So now your right leg is kind of lining out from your right hip. And we're gonna come in to thread the needle. And here, first side, leave your right hand on the mat and then inhale, reach the left arm up, opening the chest, so twisting out to the left. As you exhale, slide your left arm under the right arm. So similar idea that we did in the child's pose. Lean the left shoulder, lean your hip down. And then you have same options for the arms. Either keep your right hand on the mat and even press down through that right hand to twist a bit more out to the right side. Or the other option would be to bring the right arm behind the back. Again, you might reach for the left thigh and breathe. Keep opening the chest. It could be a stretch along that right inner thigh. It could be, and it is a twist in the spine, but you might also feel it here around the ribs. Make sure you're not collapsed on your neck. So keep your shoulders, especially that left shoulder, a bit active so you're not collapsed on the neck. Take another breath in and out. And then slowly, slowly bring your right hand back down. And as you inhale, reach the left arm up towards the ceiling once more. And then release both hands down. And we're going to now bring the right leg that was out on the side behind us. And we're going to move into our pigeon or pigeon swan. So some, something in between the pigeon and the swan today. Push down through the hands and then release the left knee and shin in front of you so that you can arrive into your pigeon pose. So we can lean the pelvis down to the mat, down to the floor, or you have an option here to use a prop. It could be a block or it could be a cushion under that left buttock, left thigh. If you feel it's quite tight or you feel any pain in the knee, then bring something under that left hip, left thigh. And if that doesn't help, then try bending the back leg, the right leg, and that might take pressure off the front leg, knee and hip as well. So find your pose, find your shape. It doesn't need to be any, any kind of restricted shape. So again, you can move a bit from side to side to find a place where you feel good. And I give you options here. You can either stay upright if you want to more enjoy the back bending, or you have an option to lean down and forward, maybe come onto your elbows. And that might intensify sensations in the front leg. Just make sure you're not hurting. And keep breathing here. You might even choose to lean down onto your chest, bring the head down. So find your pigeon swan pose. It's something 
kind of in between the yin and the yang worlds. It's not a very active pigeon, but it's not a completely relaxed swan either. It's something in between. Let yourself soften around the hips. Let the shoulders soften. Take a few more breaths in and out. And breathe all the way down towards the hips, towards the belly. And then slowly, with your next few breaths, bring yourself back up onto hands. Inhale, open the chest. And from here, we're going to go all the way up into downward facing dog. So a bit more activation needed. Now, bring your right foot toes under, tuck the toes under, and then step your both feet back into downward dog. If you have props there, you can push them aside to give you space in your downward dog. And here, I suggest moving, walking from one foot to the other, walking from one hand to the other. You can imagine your dog has a tail, you're wagging the tail a bit. And just let the backs of the legs open. Let the heavy head drop down. Take a couple of breaths in and out. And then we are preparing to do all of these movements on the other side. We start from the winged dragon. So when you are ready, step your left foot forward. And again, you can let your left foot go to the outer edge to the left side of the mat and then bring the right knee down. You can release the right foot toes and leave your hands on the inside of that left foot. And again, option to bring a block under the hands if you want to stay a bit higher up and let the left hip open. So the knee is kind of rotating a bit out to the side. And again, you might even come to the outer edge of that left foot. You don't need to plant the foot down. And you could move. You could lean a bit from one side to the other, looking for that opening in the front of the right hip, the right thigh, maybe the groin area, the inner thigh in that left leg, maybe the hamstring, so the back side of the thigh in that front leg as well. Open the chest, take a couple more breaths in and out. And remember, second side of the same pose can be very different. So you can make the shape a bit different. And then let's prepare for the half splits. Now a bit deeper breath in and start to send the pelvis back. So now more straightening the front leg, you could slide the front leg a bit further forward and either keep hands on a block or keep hands on the mat and start to lean forward. And here you could let your head hang down so you can soften the neck, you can soften the shoulders. And you might continue that small movement. Again, second side might be very different. So see if you need to adjust where your legs are. You can always bring that front leg also closer to the center line if that gives you a better opening along the back side of the body. So from the back of that left leg, maybe all the way to the neck, could be the whole back line opening. Take another breath in and out. And then open your chest a bit higher up, away from the mat, and slide your left leg, that front leg, out to the side. So it goes maybe almost straight to the side, preparing for that thread, the needle. Let yourself adjust the legs, and then when you feel ready, leave left hand down, and inhale, twist out to the right. Reach the right arm up towards the ceiling and exhale, slide that right arm under the left arm, lean the right shoulder, lean the hip down, 
and you can still adjust the legs if needed. Now option to either keep the left hand down or left hand fingertips on the floor and press down through the left arm to open the chest a bit more out to the left side towards that left leg. Or the other option is to reach the left arm behind the back. And again, you could reach left hand maybe to the right thigh or the hip crease on the right side. And breathe in and out again. Just slightly, slightly pressing down through the right shoulders. So you're not collapsed on the neck. And breathe into that chest space. Take another breath or two in and out. Enjoying this thread the needle full body opening. And then slowly release the left hand down if you had it behind the back and lift your right arm up towards the ceiling. So once more, twist out to the right and then release the hands down and step or slide your left leg behind you and push down through the hands. So now you can bring your right shin, right knee closer to the hands into that kind of pigeon swan combination of those two birds. And then you can either release the left leg, the left foot behind you, or you have an option to bend the left leg behind you. So making sure there's no pain in the knees, in the hips. Again, you have an option to bring a prop. I'm going to bring my cushion under the right buttock, under the right thigh. It just eases a bit the pressure in the front leg. And then when you have the legs in a manageable place, it could be a big stretch, but make sure it's not painful. Then you can decide to either stay upright a proud pigeon opening the chest or if you want slowly lean down maybe onto your elbows or even bring the chest bring the head down so this pose often creates some opening in the front like buttock thigh but it could be opening on the front of the back leg as well and it could be opening through the spine, either on the front or the back side, depending on what you do with your back. And keep breathing here again. Let your neck, let your shoulders soften as much as possible. Breathe all the way down towards the hips. Another breath in and out. Let all tension melt away. And then with the next breath, bigger inhalation, open the chest. If you've been leaning down and forward, lift yourself onto your hands. And this time we're not going to go into downward dog. Just move all props that you have under the pelvis and then sit on to the right hip and bring your legs in front of you. So now you're sitting on your pelvis and we're going to roll down all the way down onto our back. So make sure you have space behind you and then bring yourself to lie down on the back. So here we're going to go into some bridge movements. So you could leave arms long next to your sides and leave your knees bent, feet about hip width apart. Now with your next exhalation, press the feet down and then peel your pelvis, roll the spine off the mat, open the chest, inhale. And as you exhale, roll the spine down. Start from the upper back, vertebra by vertebra. Slowly bring the back, bring the pelvis down. Inhale on the mat, release the buttocks. And exhale again, press down through the feet. Roll the pelvis, 
Peel the spine off the mat, open the chest, inhale. And with your own exhalation, roll the spine down again. Slowly releasing down. Inhale. One more round. This time we're going to stay a bit longer. Exhale, press the feet down. Again, roll the spine off the mat. And now we're going to stay in this bridge a bit longer. If you want, you could walk your shoulder blades, arms closer together, even interlock fingers under the pelvis. And just enjoy that opening. Don't push too hard, so keep it still soft. But do keep the legs, inner thighs active. And breathe towards that front line, towards the chest. You can gently press the backs of the shoulders down. Keep your big toes grounded. Take another breath or two in and out. And then slowly, slowly start to release the arms and release the spine, release the back down. And do a couple of windshield wipers, swing the legs from side to side and you could also open the arms wider apart, cactus shape or a T shape. And we're going to come into a full twist, a reclining twist. So first side, Bring your both legs to the right side of the mat. You can bring your legs on top of each other. So the left side of the pelvis rolls on top of the right hip. Leave the chest open. And you can adjust the left arm. It could be bent, it could be extended. If you want, you can bring your right hand resting on top of the left knee or thigh. And let the shoulders soften. You can turn head to one side or the other. And take a few breaths in and out here. You can visualize the breath sliding down and up along the spine. And from shoulders down to the hips. And then slowly with your next breath, release the legs back up to the center. And let the legs come down to the left side of the mat. And again, you could stack the hips, bring the right leg on top of the left if you want. Leave the chest open, leave the right arm, the right shoulder open. Left hand could rest on top of the right leg. And again, just breathe here. Soften the neck, soften the jaw. So make sure you're not biting your teeth together. Take a few more breaths in and out in your twist. After those few breaths, slowly release the legs back up to the center. And if you want, you could hug the knees in before finding Shavasana pose. Or if you feel it's not really needed, just slowly start to look for your final resting pose. Could be lying down on the back, or you might prefer lying down on your side, or maybe come lie down on the belly if you want. Any easy pose. 
And you're very welcome to use props here, maybe cushions under the knees, cushion under the head if you want. Once you have found your Shavasana pose, maybe close your eyes if that feels okay. And just give yourself a little moment at the end of the practice to check in, to focus on how you feel. Notice each breath in. Notice each breath out. each breath to soften, to release tension there might be left in your body. Let your mind rest in your breath. Give yourself at least a few more breaths in your resting pose. Also give yourself a permission to stay longer if you now feel tired, if you feel relaxed. And if you have time, let yourself stay longer, extend this Shavasana pose. If you do feel that you'd like to start closing the practice and take a couple of deeper breaths in and out. And with those breaths, bring some gentle movement back to your fingers and toes hands and feet. You can gently open your eyes. Maybe stretch arms overhead along the floor to reach hands and feet away from each other. If you would like to end your practice in a seat, roll onto one side and slowly bring yourself up into a seated pose. And that could be any easy seat, maybe a cross-legged seat, or you could sit on your shins. Wherever you are, take a few more breaths to slowly close the practice. And if it's part of your practice, you can bring palms together in front of the chest. And before finishing, make sure you thank yourself for taking this time to calm down, to slow things down. And I thank you very much for joining in. Namaste. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you for joining in. I really hope you feel a bit more chilled now. 
If you enjoyed the practice, please give the video a thumbs up and also leave a comment below. Let me know how you felt after this practice. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. There will be loads, loads more yoga classes and other yoga related videos coming up. Thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.